Hello, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about the Vampire Hunters event with Ilya. This event features Ilya, Kari and Maho and it's a pretty cool one. Actually, all of the events are pretty cool, but the cool one about this one is that there is actually some changes to the reward structure. But essentially, a couple of guys over at Reddit just did some hard work doing some of the calculations and I just wanted to present it to you guys. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the event itself. As always, it is the same normal stages. You got one to 15, you've got the first clear bonus bonuses, three stars on all of them, as well as the endeavors, you know. What do they call it in this game? Quests. After you have successfully cleared stages 1 to 15, you will then be able to fight the boss who was absent because I murdered him. After you take down this boss in cold blood, you go over to the hard mode and then you've got the hard stages. So as you can see, we have five hard stages here, three of which are Maho and two of which are Kari. I'm not going to turn this into an event guide because I think I've done enough of these and these are kind of like the same thing over and over. If this is your first time doing an event, I do suggest that you check out one of my other videos that has to do with events, whether it be the Heart Snare event or the, um, or the Mimi Little Literal adventures event that we just had but yeah same old at this stage we will only get the hard boss and that is probably the first thing i want to talk about a lot of people keep asking in the comments whether you should clear the hard stage or if you should clear the normal stage depending on how many times it takes for you to clear it so for you newer players because i know there are actually quite a lot of you newer guys what you can do is that even if you can't take down the boss in one go say like you could only do like 135k you could only do 50k in one go right what happens is that the hp is saved and you can go in again to like bring it down again until you can fully clear the boss what this means is that you will eventually be able to clear the entire boss so again the question comes down to well if i take like two or three tries to clear the hide boss but only one time to clear the normal boss which one should i clear i believe the break point is around four to five runs so if you can do the hard boss in about two to three runs and you can do the normal boss in one run it is still better to do the hard boss just purely from like a drops point of view it is more efficient to run the hard mode up to i think it's like four to five i think from five and beyond it gets inefficient but honestly like even if you're starting today you should be able to like clear this boss in like two to three runs. If you're a newer player, one strategy you could do is you could save all of your boss tickets until the very last day. By the last day, you should be able to clear the boss in like two to three runs and that should actually save you so many runs. So honestly, I reckon everybody should be running hard. Hello everybody, this is Post Production Lace. I've actually forgotten to recommend some team comps because I know some people were struggling with this boss. So I'm gonna start with like a baseline type of team comp which should get you at least like your two hit kill. Generally, to finish these bosses in like one to two turns, you'd usually go at least one one tank, three DPS, and one healer. As you can see, I've got a Miyako here, and then I've got three physical DPS. Remember, we want to stack the same type of a damage, as well as Yui the healer in the back. However, of course, there can be way better team comps than this. So for example, if you have Jun, Jun gives you access to physical defense down. Then you pop in your Jun, and then suddenly your three DPSs are doing a crap load more damage. For the physical DPS is same kind of deal. You could take Mitsuki, or you could take Makoto. Makoto is a great pickup because she has massive physical defense down and she is just she just does so much damage other than that to pair up with them you're gonna want the best physical damage dealer which is gonna be Kari or the Shiori or the Hiori or like the Suzuna Erika is quite good as well but like characters such as like Rei or like uh Tamaki or like um Misogi I guess at this stage of the game they're just not quite that good and so you can kind of like well, don't use them. So yeah, so from this, the next best upgrade would be if like uh, the Eriko was a Makoto instead. Then if you're like really trying to push it, you could replace this Yui with like another physical DPS. Obviously one of the ones that I mentioned before. Mimi is also a good one because a lot of people are going to have her at four to five stars. But another one to actually consider is Tamaki because Tamaki slows the UB gain of the bosses. So therefore, if you're pretty juiced up, what you could do is something like that. Or you could even use like Shinobu because Shinobu will provide a little bit of tanking with her daddy. Physical defense down, you guys already know what I'm saying. Tank, 3 DPS, 1 healer. If you can help it, add as much physical defense down as you can. As you get stronger and stronger, take off your healer and put more physical damage in. With that being said, post-production laces out. All right, after that, we've got the hard shards. So we've got the Maho and we've got the Kari shards. I would estimate you get about 100 Maho shards and about 80 Kari shards. What this does mean is that if you are close to five stars on these two characters, what you could consider doing is actually saving up for them. What I mean by that, for example, is on my global account, I have Kari at four stars and at about, I think, 80 shards. And if I get another 80 shards from here, I will have 160 shards approx and that will get me to Kari five star. Same kind of deal for Maho. I have her at about like 20 or 30 shards and I'll be able to get her to about 
about like 70 shards. And then from this event, I'll get 100 shards. And then so I could actually use those dungeon coins for something else. There is another approach that you could take, especially for the Maho shards, because they're just so like abundant. As I've said before, the dungeon coins, I kind of value a little bit less because they just like, they're so easy to get. What you could do is actually have like the 150 for Maho and just keep farming these shards so that when the unique equipment comes out, you will be prepared for it. Honestly, the unique equipment is like so far away and like the limiting factor for unique equipment is typically not these shards actually. So whether you do this or the other way, like it really doesn't matter in the long run, it's just an option. But you guys already have five star Maho and Kari, you're lucky that you don't have to farm so many shards later on. All right, moving on to what's actually important. So let me go to the box. Oh, there is no boxes here. All right, it seems that the latest event had just finished with this reset. So that's a bit unlucky. I'm just going to flick over to the Reddit post. All right, guys, again, massive props to RayQ09 and 87ZP. This is their content, not my content. They've done the hard work and so kudos to them. Thank you guys so much. So the first thing is that in this event, we will have 470 less junk equipment out of the first four boxes. And because we have the same amount of DAs and gems, the efficiency of like actually pulling the DAs and gems is actually way better than it was before. We actually go on to observe that the unlimited box, the fifth box actually has 200 less junk equipment to empty so that the efficiency is also boosted in that one. So it's now 641 medals to grab 125 gems and 35 DA rather than 841, which is what it was before. This is really good. And my first instinct was that like, you know, everyone should clear all of the boxes. However, I do know that this is not true. And now we have 87 ZP's post. If you're casual and you don't really want to like, you don't really care about it or whatever, like fine. Like it, you're not losing out too much if you just like throw it all in. I don't blame anyone for just kind of smashing all their medals into it. Like, you know, this is a pretty casual game. So with that being said, we have this table here and this table is extremely useful. What 87 ZP has calculated here is the efficiency of the gems and stones to each box. What this table is really telling us is should we just refresh the box or should we keep rolling in it? So what we see here is that the gem efficiency in box one is actually abysmally low and box two is only marginally higher than box five. The other thing we notice is that the divine amulets is actually pretty consistent across all of this. So that is actually the first observation. If you are holding out for the divine amulets from box one through to five, like don't hold out for it. It's virtually the same. And if you've already cleared out the gems, for example, from box one, and you still have like a whole bunch of stones in here, you just move on. The second point is a pretty interesting one. So he mentions here, you should reset immediately if the remaining gems divided by the amount of remaining rolls is worse than box five. All right, so I'm just going to pull out the calculator here. And what 87 ZP is saying is that if you have, for example, 100 rolls left in the box one, however, there are only five jemmies left. So let's say five divided by 100, we get a ratio, right? We get a 0.05. This is the efficiency of the gems in that box at that point. So this is already lower than this. If you've already gotten the shards, then at this point, I would move on. Honestly, the moment you get the shards from box one, in my opinion, unless like your gem efficiency is very high still, I would just move on because the box five gem efficiency is at 0.195. So if this number here represents for every 100 rolls, you get five gems. What this over here represents is that for every 100 rolls, you get 19.5 gems. That's four times more. And it just means that you should move on. Now I get that that was all kind of a little bit confusing confusing, but like, let me try to summarize it in a nutshell to make it easier to digest. Generally, I think you're going to want to reset box one ASAP. After that, you can fully clear up boxes two, three, and four, and then just keep clearing out box five. If at any point you clear out all of the jemmies and you've gotten the character shot from that box, you should reset. The reason is because the stone efficiency is effectively the same across all of the boxes. So 87ZP recommends that you reset boxes one and two immediately and stick around for box three, as well as box four before resetting, unless you have this like ratio here. That's also a good approach, but I know a lot of you like uh, don't really like the math. I think that this is also a fine approach. All right, guys, somehow this video went way longer than I wanted it to go. So I will cover Ilya in another video. But hopefully you guys kind of grasp what I've tried to say here. These guys have done the good work, but it's up to you guys if you want to internalize it. I will drop this link down in the description below if you guys would like need to see it a little bit more clearly. But yeah, exciting times ahead and let's wrap up the video there. So I've got a secret question for you guys. There are actually two forms of Ilya. There is this small version or there is this big version. I know it's kind of counterintuitive because this is the chibi, but you can see she is more of like a grown up here. So the wiki actually has a better picture. So this is the small Ilya and this is the big Ilya. So which one do you prefer? Small or big Ilya? Let me know down in the comments below. I would really appreciate it because if you're able to answer the question, that means you've made it to this part of the video and it means that you've watched till the end and I'm very grateful for that. All right, I think we're done here. Like I said, Ilya video is coming up soon, but as always, if you found this video kind of helpful or mildly entertaining, consider leaving a like, a comment or a sub or a pin or a follow. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.